Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and application. So, in the previous uh, lecture, we have discussed about the rank and nullity theorem. So, today we are going to discuss some problem based on that one. So, in the previous lecture, uh, we have discussed that if I have a linear transformation from a vector space u to the vector space v and the dimension of a vector space u is n, then by the rank nullity theorem, the rank of t plus nullity that will be always equal to the number n. So, this uh, is the theorem what we have done. So, based on this one, we will discuss some other results. So, it says that let we have a linear transformation T from U to V be a linear transformation then. So, the first one is say that if T is 1 1, so now I am taking the T is 1 1 then, so I am considering the T is 1 1 and U 1, U 2, U n are linearly independent vectors that belongs to U then T of u 1, T of u 2 and T of u n are also ally. So, this is the condition there that if T I am taking, so this T is 1 1 and if I take a set of vectors that are linearly independent in the given vector space, then their image is also linearly independent. So, this one is one of the result of that one and the second result is that if I take V 1, V 2, V n are linearly independent vectors in the vector space V or I can say that it belongs to in R t the range space of t and u 1, u 2, u 3, u n are vectors such that T of u 1 is equal to v 1, T of u 2 is equal to v 2 and so on, v n. Then the set u 1, u 2, u 3 are linearly independent. So, in this case it is just the opposite one here we have a t is 1 1 and then if the set of vectors in u are li then their image is also li. But here it is opposite that if I have the vectors v 1, v 2 up to v n that are linearly independent vector in the range space t and suppose I choose n number of vectors in u such that satisfying this condition then this set of vector is also ally. So, this is the uh, statement of the theorem. So, now we want to prove this one. So, let us uh, prove the first part. Now, given that T is 1 1 and u 1, u 2, u n are linearly independent. So, now I need to show that these are also independent. Now, we need to show that the set of vectors T, 
u1 t u2 t un so is li so for this one i will take the linear combination so let i take some linear combination alpha 1 t of u1 plus alpha t of u2 plus alpha n t of u n that is equal to 0. So, this com linear combination I have taken where my alpha 1 alpha i's are scalars. Now, so which implies that t of alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 alpha n u n that is equal to 0. So, from here I can say that alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 alpha n u n that belongs to the null space of t because their image is 0. So, it belongs to the null space of t, but t is 1 1 which implies that the null space of t it contains only the 0 element of the space u. So, from here and these are the vector belongs to u. So, from here I can say that alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 alpha n u n that should be equal to 0. And now, since u 1 u 2 u n so, this is already given to us that these are li. So, this set is li. So, from here which implies that my alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n all will be 0. So, this scalar will be 0 and from here I can say that because this alphas are same as these alphas. So, from here I can say that set t u 1 t u 2 t u n is r y. This set is a linearly independent set and the vector belongs to these are linearly independent. So, this is the proof of this uh, first part. In the second part we are going opposite way that these are linearly independent in the range space and we need to show that these are linearly independent u 1 u 2. So, now, so the second part uh, we are going to prove is given that the set v 1, v 2, v 3, v n that belongs to the range space T is linearly independent set. So, that is given to us and this belongs to the range space of T and I take a set of u 1, u 2. So, this will definitely belongs to u such that T of u i is equal to v i. So, that is true for all i 1, to up to n. So, now it is uh, given to us. Now, from here I want to show that this u 1, u 2, u n are linearly independent. So, for that one we need to show we need to show that the set of vectors u 1, u 2, u n are linearly independent. So, for this one I will take the linear combination. So, let alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 alpha n u n that is equal to 0. So, I take the linear combination and alpha is are scalars. So, they belong to the given field. Now, in this case I take the transformation 
uh, the linear transformation T. So that will be alpha 1 u 1 and that is T of 0 and that is will be 0 that we already know that 0 element maps to the 0 element and from here I can write as T 1 alpha 1 T u 1 plus alpha 2 T u 2 plus alpha n T u n that is should be equal to 0. Now given that T of u i is equal to v i. So that is given for all i's. So from here I can say that this will be equal to alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 alpha n v n that should be equal to 0. And since this set v 1 v 2 v n is a linearly independent set which implies that alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n all are 0. And from there if I alpha 0 then it implies, so which implies that the set u 1, u 2, u n is Li. Because if I all the scalars are coming 0 then from this linear combination I am able to find that this u1 u2 un is a linearly independent set and they, this is what we want to show that this set is also linearly independent. So this way we can do the proof of this theorem. Now based on this one so let us do one few example that how we can use this previous theorems for finding some solution. Now I have a let the dimension of u is n and t is from u to v is a linear transformation and t is 1 1. Okay, so first we uh, take on to, so T is on to, then, then prove that, that T is 1 1 if and only if T, if and only if I can say that the dimension of V is N. So this one is the question that we have a dimension of U that is N and I take a transformation that is a linear transformation and it is on to then it says that prove that T is 1 1 if and only if dimension of V is N. So this one we need to prove. Now from here so let us uh, so let us start with the first part let T is 1 1. Now I have the transformation T from U to V and the dimension of U is N. Now if T is 1 1 that which implies that null space of T that contain the 0 element of U. So that we know about this one. Now using a rank nullity theorem, the rank of T plus nullity of T that should be equal to N. But now in this case this null t is 0 because it contain only one element. So from here we can say that the, the rank of t should be equal to n and if the rank of t 
is equal to n then from here we can say that dimension of v should be equal to n and after doing this one so we should uh, use this concept also that not directly we can say then from here i can say that the rank of uh, t is n also t is on to which implies that range space of t that will be equal to v and from here if i say that the uh, so from here i can say that the rank of t that is the rank of t means the dimension of the range space so in this case it will be equal to n because it is a complete v so from here i can say that the dimension of t the rank of t should be equal to n and from here i can say that the the dimension of v should be equal to n so this is what we wanted to show that if t is 1 1 and the map t is on to then definitely the dimension of v should be n now the second part the converse conversely let dimension of v is n now we also have a dimension of u that is also n so it is given to me the dimension of v is n dimension of u is n then and t is on to so that is given to me now using 2 is on to so i need to show now we have the dimension of v is n dimension of u is already n and we need to show that t is 1 1 now using rank nullity theorem i can say that the rank of t plus nullity of t that should be equal to n because the dimension of u is n and from here I can say that nullity of t will be 0 and if the nullity of t is 0 so which implies that null space of t that contains only 0 element of u and which says that t is 1 1 that we have already seen that in that case my t is 1 1. So, this way we are able to show that t will be 1 1 or maybe not directly we can write from here then we maybe I can extend this condition. Now, we know that to check the condition t is 1 1 we can do like this one that let t of u 1 is equal to t of u 2 which implies that t of u 1 minus t of u 2 is equal to 0 and this is 0 in v and from here I can write that because t is a linear transformation so I can write this as is equal to which implies that u 1 minus u 2 that belongs to the null space of t but the null space of t contains only the 0 element so from here I can say that u 1 minus u 2 will be 0 and from here I can say u 1 is equal to u 2. So this is the usual way to show that t is 1 1 so which implies that t is 1 1. So we are able to show this result. So in fact from here we can see that it, sh it says that that if I take the transformation t from u to v and dimension of u is equal to dimension of v then 
from here we can say that if P is 1 1 then it implies P is on to or if T is on to that will imply that T is 1 1. So, on to and 1 1 this way we can define. So, only condition is that it should be from the same dimension of vector space u to the same uh, vector space v of the same dimension then these things are true. Now, from here from here I can say that let us take another example or maybe one more result I want to show that if I have a transformation t from u to v be a linear transformation then dimension of range space of t will be always less than equal to minimum of dimension u dimension v. So, it will be the minimum of this one. So, that we already know that because we have seen this condition in the case of a matrix of order m corrosion. And in the in that case, we have seen that the rank of this matrix A is always less than equal to minimum of M n. So, the same thing we are writing here. So, now after this one, once we know that it is T is 1 1 on 2, then we can talk about the another thing is that how we can take the inverse of a linear transformation. That how we can define. So, before that one we will define a definition that a linear map T T from U to V is said to be non singular is said to be non singular if it is 1 1 and on to. So, if it is 1 1 and on to then we say that this linear map from u to v is non singular and here we we are talking about that finite dimensional so u and v are of finite dimension and now if i have a this one such maps are called isomorphism So, this is called the isomorphism. Isomorphism that they look like the same. Now, so after uh, doing this one, we will define that how we can take the inverse of this one. So, from here I can write definition that a linear transformation. L t is non singular if and only if it has its inverse. So, that way we can define the inverse of the linear transformation. If it is non singular like the we have a matrix A and we know that we can find the inverse of this matrix only thing is that I should talk about that it is of the same dimension and then we can discuss that how we can define the inverse of this one. So, 
for finding the inverse now we will defining that u and v are finite dimensional and their dimension is same. So, that we can use. So, here because whenever we define the inverse of a given matrix we find that it should be non singular and the other thing is that it should be of uh, same dimension or it should be a square matrix. So, in this case also we are saying that the linear transformation T is from u to v and dimension of u is same as dimension of v. So, that should be there. So, let us take one example that how we can find the inverse because they know specific formula to find the inverse it is depending upon the problem. So, let us we take the linear transformation. So, suppose so let we have a transformation T from P 3 to V 3. So, P 2 to V 3. V 3. So, let this be a linear transformation such that, so this transformation is given to me. So, where P 2 is a set of all the polynomials, so that we already know that my P 2 is set of all polynomials of degree less than equal to 2. So, this is a set of polynomials. So, now we define the T. So, T is given to me in this form. So, polynomial I know it is written can be written as A plus B x plus C x square. So, I am taking this transformation as A B C. So, this way I am defining this linear transformation this is my linear transformation 1. So, here I am taking the polynomial second order polynomial. So, and the coefficient of this going to the in the vector space V 3. So, now I want to check that whether the inverse exist or not. Now, so first I need to check that this linear transformation is 1 1 on to or not. One thing is two here that the dimension of P 2 is 3 and V 3 is also third, three dimensions. Now, we need to check or need to show that T is 1 1 on 2. So, this one we need to check. The first one is that it is well defined because from any polynomial I can have my coefficient a, b, c. So, from here I can say that T is 1, 1. T is 1, 1 because if I how I can check that. So, let T of p 1 x polynomial is equal to t of p 2 x, which implies that. So, I am taking the polynomial here. So, let uh, I take t polynomial I just take a 0 plus b 0 x plus c 0 x square and I am writing this is equal to some a 1 plus b 1 x plus c 1 x square. This is I am right. And now from here, now the image of t of this one will be the coefficient. So, from here it is equal to a naught b naught c naught that will be equal to a 1 b 1 c 1. And this is true for all x belongs to the interval whatever the interval we are defining from here. So, which implies 
because this uh, vector belongs to V3 and we know that the two vectors are equal it means their component are equal also. So, from here this gives that A naught is equal to A1, B naught is equal to B1, C naught is equal to C1 and from here I can say that using this one I can say from here that the P1x will be equal to P2x and from this one I can say that the T is 1 1. Now, I also claim that T is on to. So, it is true that that for any u, suppose I take some any u, um, maybe I will take as A, B, C belongs to V3 we can find there exists a polynomial belongs to P2 such that for this one I can find always can find a polynomial that will be look like so that the T of A plus B x plus C x square will be equal to a B C. So, this is true for all elements from the V 3 then from here I can say that the transformation T is on to. Now, you can see from here that it is moving from from P to V 3 both have the same dimension 3 and this is 1 1 and on to also. So, now from here I can say that T is non singular implies that T inverse exists, T inverse means inverse exists and the T inverse will be that will be A B C equal to a plus b x plus c x square and this t inverse will be from v 3 to p 2. So, after doing this one we can say that this t inverse will exist because it is 1 1 on 2 and t inverse is the transformation we have defined like this one and from here also also T is isomorphic means when T is 1 1 on 2 and moving from one vector space to the another vector space of the same, same dimension then we can say that the T is isomorphic and from here I can say that P 2 is isomorphic to V 3 this is the sign that we can define for isomorphism. So, this is a tilde and then straight line. So, this will become the isomorphism. So, it means that P 2 and V 3 they are isomorphic to each other although they seems that they are different because one contain the polynomial of degree less than equal to 2 and another contain the uh, the vector in the three dimension the we are talking about the real vectors, but now we are able to show that this is 1 1 on 2 it is non singular and inverse exists. So, from here we can say that this is isomorphic to each other. So, this way we can show that T is isomorphic and T inverse exists. So, we will stop here. So, in the today's lecture we have discussed some application of rank nullity theorem and then we have also defined the inverse of the uh, linear transformation T from a vector space U to vector space V. 
so in the next lecture we will continue with this one uh, thanks for watching thanks very much Thank you.